Hi guys, it's Diane here from UK Disney Vlog. So I wanted to do another review video. I know I've done a couple, um, I just wanted to review our Disneyland Paris trip and actually Disneyland Paris itself. To me, Disneyland Paris has always kind of had a little bit of a bad reputation. I come from, unfortunately I'm old enough to know, the era of Euro Disney. My parents put me off, the press put me off, I just didn't want to go. So as a kid it just never appealed to me. And I was really fortunate enough to go to Walt Disney World in Florida, so I thought, what was the point? However, growing up and watching all you guys on the vlogs um, and what, listening to some, some amazing people talking about it on podcasts, I heard how fantastic it was and I really, really wanted to give it a try. So we did. Me, the kids and David went to Disneyland Paris in August last year and it was amazing it was such a phenomenal trip and we absolutely 100% loved it uh, the reason why I just wanted to do this review to you guys so if you've never been before um, and thinking about going I just want you to think about a few different things um, the plus points and just a few negative points I also want to see if any of you guys have had the same negative points that we've had or if you've never experienced them before at all so let's start with the positive it's amazing it's amazing so as you are walking down main street and you see that castle for the very first time you get that goosebump feeling and you get that feeling of wow you do get that wow factor the theming in disneyland paris is exceptional it's stunning it's so beautiful and i don't think i can use any more adjectives than i've already said it's just beautiful um, the castle's amazing, the fact that you can go inside it and look around and you go down to the dungeon and see Maleficent. Sorry, spoiler alert if you've never been. Um, just the whole grounds and the surrounding of it is just exquisite. Um, Adventureland near Pirates of the Caribbean is just beautiful as well. It's so, it's so well themed. It's a proper, proper Disney. The prop, yeah, it's proper Disney Imagineering at its best. It's beautiful. You can go around looking around little caves. Um, I can't, I can't gush about it enough. It's just the theming is second to none, and this is why we love Disney so very much because the Imagineering is just. It's not just a, a random pirate ship or anything, but it's just beautiful. It's exquisite. Now, our second major thing is the rides. The rides are amazing. It's not the same rides as you experience in Walt Disney World in Florida. It's not an off-the-shelf ride that you can pick up anywhere. They are different. They are slightly different theming. Um, Hyperspace Mountain's different. Big Thunder Mountain's different. Um, dare I say, I prefer it. I'm a diehard Disney fan, diehard Walt Disney World Orlando fan, but I love um, Big Thunder Mountain in Paris. It's it's lovely it's an amazing ride and yeah i think i prefer that one unfortunately um the rides are great um despite them being in some of them being in french you still get it you do still get it um the same with the shows they've got some fantastic shows um and they, we were a bit apprehensive about going to see the shows um obviously being in french and i don't speak french i can just about order a croissant and a cup of coffee um but you understand it. You have one person speaking in French, one person speaking in English, and you just get it. It's hard to explain until you've seen it, but you do, you get it. Um, they've also got other rides that don't exist in other, par in other parks, and they really should do. RC Racer is a fantastic ride. That needs to go in Toy Story Land in Orlando. Wholeheartedly, it's probably looks like a really simple ride to put together. It's not a massive ride system, but it's a great ride and um, we absolutely loved it. Now, there's lots of different food choices around the parks. Um, yeah, so it, there's, uh, there's something for everyone in the park. So that's a really another, another major plus point for us. Now, I'm sorry to say we did have some, some downsides to our trip. Um, and it wouldn't stop us going, so don't let it put you off. It really wouldn't stop us going. Um, but the biggest downside for me was the customer service. It was just not that Disney sparkle there with their customer service. Yeah, I just didn't ever get that amazing cast interaction that you would 
that I've experienced before in other Disneyland parks. Um, yeah, it just it just let me down a little bit. We had one amazing cast interaction, and that was on Big Thunder Mountain, and she was great. She really kind of got us going, and that's the kind of level of customer service I'd expect. We didn't get that. We got the same sort of level of customer service in um, the restaurants that we've tried. Um, we went to the Rainforest Cafe, and we love the Rainforest Cafe as a family. I don't care if you like it. I don't care if you don't. We like it. We love the theming. The food's okay, but generally we have a really good meal. And we didn't. We didn't have a good meal. The customer service was was rubbish. It was really poor, and certainly, certainly wasn't worth the money we spent. So. So much in fact that the next day we went to McDonald's, we had a better burger, I enjoyed it much more and it was much much cheaper. Which is not how I wanted to spend my holiday, but hey, the kids loved it and the, the food was hot and warm. Another thing that kind of put me off was the feeling of security and safety. Um, as you're leaving the parks at night, we stayed back to watch the fireworks and then we stayed back even more to do some shopping and um, we didn't go home with the mass crowds back to the car park. Now on the route back to the car park, there's the train station, it's quite a walk back to the car park, at least five minutes, um, especially when you've got a girl with a broken leg and she's walking with the boo, it's a very slow walk back to the car park. Now we didn't feel 100% safe walking down that dark, that dark route back to the car park. There were lots of other people around trying to, that weren't part of the Disney crowd, they were trying to, there to sell you stuff, like flashing lights for the kids and they're really trying to get you in to, to, to buy all their products and I don't like that, it doesn't make me feel safe, um, maybe you've had a different experience, now feel free to leave a comment and say if you've had that before or not had it before, because I would love to know, I'd love to know if there's any people who have different experiences and if they're not always there. Now, another negative point for us, which is something we don't have to experience on a daily basis when we go to theme parks, um, is, is the disability um, the disability pass. Anyone with a disability, if you have to go through this, every time you go to a theme park, I really, really feel for you. So if any of you have seen our vlogs, Emily broke her foot the week before we went to Disneyland Paris. I know, can't quite believe it. So she was in a boot, she could mobilise, so she could walk, she could walk up and down stairs, but what she couldn't do is wait there. She couldn't stand on her feet in a queue for about 40-50 minutes because it really hurt. It was a fresh break, it was only a week old, so she couldn't do that wait there for 40 minutes. It, it just it hurt her too much. So we decided to um, access the disability pass. Now the disability pass, obviously you need medical certificates, you need to prove that you've got the injury in the first place and prove to what level um, that you can sort of like transfer into a, into a ride vehicle, whether you can manage some stairs or not. This gives you the sort of different access levels. Now maybe because we said we could wait there a little bit and she could walk a few stairs, maybe this is, we had a different pass altogether. So maybe um, those of you that can't transfer very well or can't do stairs, have a different route and a different access. Because what we found was that we were just joining the fast pass queues. Now don't get me wrong, we didn't use this pass to jump ahead of the queues. If you go up to Hyperspace Mountain and there's a 45 minute wait for this ride, they give you a time slot to come back in 45 minutes. And you can only do one ride at a time. So you are always waiting the same amount of time as everybody else just not in the queue. So we could sit down in a cafe, granted, but we could sit down and wait for our time to go on the ride. Now what they did is they sent us to the fast pass queue. Now, if this might be different for other people, but this is the accessibility um, level that we had, we got sent to the fast pass queue. And now some of these rides, the fast pass queues aren't very accessible. Hyperspace Mountain is the biggest one that's just atrocious. You have to go around the back of the building sort of leave a wheelchair in a random place, climb quite a lot of stairs, so she managed it very slowly with the assistance of David, and then it was a trek all the way up and down, up and down. And obviously if you've arrived at the same time as a group of fast pass people, you are still waiting a very long time. So we in effect waited probably about 20 minutes extra to join the fast pass queue, if not longer. Um, once we got off the ride, the wheelchair was in a completely different place altogether, so one of us would have to go off, 
find the wheelchair and then join up a bit later on because obviously she'd then be walking all the way around the building. Um, and if any of you have been to Disneyland Paris, Hyperspace Mountain ride building is massive. Um, it's not just a quick walk around the corner. Now I think this really needs to be improved. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time Emily's broken her leg on a trip. She broke her leg on a trip to Florida and we did a day trip to Magic Kingdom. And on our day trip to Magic Kingdom, we did the same thing. We hired a wheelchair, we got the disability pass, um, and we obviously proved that she'd broken her foot again. I can't believe it. Let's hope, fingers crossed, doesn't do it next time. Um, but it was a completely different experience. It was amazing. For a lot of the rides, you could take your wheelchair or your crutch or your walking stick right up to the, um, the end at the start of the ride. The cast member would then take the wheelchair off you and pretty much 99% of the time, the wheelchair would be waiting for you when you got off the ride, which is a completely different area. It'd be right where you got off, right in your seat, and it'd be perfect, ideal for you. You wouldn't have to go and find it. It was just an, a completely different experience to what we had in Paris. And I know I've probably gone on about this for too much and it's not something we have to come across every day. And if it's different for people that have got a next level up, then I apologize. But for us, it wasn't the best experience. And I've just, I feel for anybody that has to go through this on a daily, daily basis. Hopefully we don't have to do it again. But having said that, this is twice she's done it. So God knows what's gonna happen next time. Um, I think I'm gonna wrap her in bubble wrap. But it's just one point to mention um, and one point to bear in mind. It's not always, if you are disabled and do have difficulty with mobility, um, it's not always the easiest route around and some of the rides you might have to not do because of the access and the accessibility of it. That said, Disneyland Paris was awesome. It was 100% an amazing trip and we would go back again and again and I'd love to be an annual pass holder but there's just a few points now that I know that it, it would now that I know it's fine and I prepared for that and hopefully they would have an amazing trip again and again and again I'd love to be an annual pass holder I'm not quite sure that's gonna happen this year with our trip coming up um, to Orlando but yeah I would definitely go back again and there are so many plus points um, I want to hear from you guys. So leave some comments down below of your past trips to Disneyland Paris. What do you find, what do you enjoy doing the most? Um, what's your best point? So we've only ever done it once. So we've only ever done one, one day in each park. So what have we missed out on that we, that we didn't do? We didn't do any cast interactions, any um, character interactions. We didn't go for any other meals inside the park. So where's your favorite places to go? Have you had a better experience than me? So please, please leave your comments down below. Um, thanks for watching. Um, I hope I've not bored you with our, my rants about Disneyland Paris. But there were some amazing points as well. Don't forget to click that like and subscribe button. Um, and go back, check, check out the links below and go back and check out our past Disneyland, our Disneyland Paris trips. Um, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.